Many different tests have been created to identify specific bacteria, and these tests vary in their complexity, from direct viewing to DNA sequencing. In a clinical or research setting, scientists need to gather as much information about an organism as quickly and accurately as possible, while also minimizing expenses. Since so many biochemical characteristics of bacteria have been defined, scientists often use individual metabolic tests to classify bacteria. While no single differential test can distinguish bacteria at the species level, the results from many tests taken together can identify bacteria with a high degree of certainty. This is the goal of a multi-test system. There are many types of multi-test systems available today. A common one in small clinics and microbiology laboratories is the API-20E. This test is designed to identify non-fastidious gram-negative rods and is especially useful for members of Enterobacteriaceae, a large bacterial family composed of human mutualists and pathogens. Let's take a closer look at how to prepare and interpret the API-20E. The plastic test strip contains 20 microtubes containing dehydrated differential media. At the top of each tube is a raised structure called a cupule. For most tests, you will simply fill the microtube with a bacterial suspension to the base of the cupule. However, for some, you will also fill the entire cupule, either with additional bacterial suspension or with mineral oil. The whole test strip sits inside a plastic humidity tray to ensure the microtubes don't dry out. The tray has a smooth, clear lid and a base containing small divots. Fill these divots with water and gently pour out any excess. Surface tension will hold the water in the divots. Our Petri plate has been streaked with a pure, unknown, gram-negative bacillus. Use a sterile inoculating loop to transfer one of the colonies from the plate to a tube containing 5 milliliters of sterile saline. Use the loop to homogenize the suspension. This will be our working solution for the entire test. But don't discard the Petri plate yet. You'll need it later. Remove the API strip from its sterile packaging and place it in the filled humidity tray. Tilt the entire tray so that it will be easy to add your suspension to the strip. Using a sterile transfer pipette, fill each microtube with the bacterial suspension. This will both rehydrate and inoculate the media. Sometimes you'll get bubbles in the microtubes. Remove these by gently tapping the API strip on the lab bench or carefully squeezing the base of the microtube. Notice that three of the microtubes have a box-like border around the label, citrate, Vogue Proskauer, and gelatinase. Fill the cupules of each of these microtubes with more bacterial suspension. The labels for another five tests are underlined. ADH, lysine decarboxylase, ornithine decarboxylase, hydrogen sulfide, and urease. Use a different sterile transfer pipette to fill the cupules of these tests with sterile mineral oil. The mineral oil will prevent oxygen from entering the media, creating an anaerobic or oxygen-free environment. Cover the humidity tray with the clear plastic lid and incubate for 18 to 24 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. During this incubation period, take another colony from your Petri plate and perform an oxidase test. In our case, the culture remained a cream color. We interpret that result as negative. Although the oxidase test is not part of the strip, it counts as the 21st test of the API-20E system. For your own sample, record both the color change you observed, if any, as well as your interpretation.
positive or negative. After incubation, several of the microtube media have changed color. Each color represents either a positive or a negative result. Your instructor will provide a chart for interpreting these results. Quickly look over the strip to ensure that at least three of the test results are positive. If not, the strip should be incubated for an additional 24 hours. Record the color and result of each microtube in your results table. Your results will likely be different from the specific results we show here. In our case, ONPG is yellow, which is a positive result. ADH is also yellow, but this is a negative result. Lysine decarboxylase is red, which is a positive result. Ornithine decarboxylase is yellow, which is a negative result. Citrate is light green, hydrogen sulfide is colorless, and urease is yellow. These are all negative results. For now, you can skip over the TDA, Indole, and vogue proskauer tests. Gelatinase shows no diffusion of black pigment, which means negative. The last nine tests are interpreted similarly. Yellow is positive and blue is negative. INO, SAC, and AMY are blue and therefore negative. The other six tests are yellow and positive. Some of the tests require additional reagents before they can be interpreted. Add one drop each of the VP1 and VP2 reagents to the Vogue Proskauer microtube. These are also called Barrett's reagents A and B. The reagents must react for 10 minutes before you read the result, so set a timer. While waiting for the Vogue Proskauer reaction to finish, add one drop of TDA reagent to the TDA microtube. Our TDA test remained yellow, which is a negative result. Next, Add one drop of COVAX reagent to the indole microtube. Our media turned pink, which indicates a positive result. When the 10-minute timer sounds, record the Vogue Proskauer results. Our microtube remained colorless, which is a negative result. With all the test results recorded, we'll now calculate a seven-digit profile number based on those results. This profile number is used to identify your bacterial unknown. Notice that the 21 tests are grouped into seven sections. Each three-test section is used to calculate a single digit of the profile number. Assign a score of 1 to the first test in each section if its result is positive. Otherwise, assign a 0. For the second test, assign a score of 2 if it's positive. And for the third test, assign a score of 4 if it's positive. Add the three scores together in each section. This will give you the seven digits that make up the profile number. Look up your profile number in an appropriate book or computer database to identify your bacterial species. Your instructor will describe the procedure used in your lab. Notice that bacteria of the same species can have different profile numbers. This natural diversity within species can be due to mutations, as well as the presence or absence of certain plasmids. Sometimes the information provided by the API-20E strip will be insufficient to determine an organism's identity. In that case, additional tests need to be performed. Follow your instructor's directions for any additional procedures. After you've recorded your results, properly dispose of your API strip, Petri plate, and any other materials. Clean up your work area before leaving the lab.